but I'm going to share a scripture with you right now, and then we're going to have an invitation. And it's so amazing that it comes from Acts chapter 5, which is where we pick up today. So stay reverent, stay reverent. Acts chapter 5, verse 1, listen to this. We have it up on the screen for you. Acts chapter 5, verse number 1. And a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? Stay in the spirit. Don't get distracted. Stay in the spirit. While it remained, while, while, while it rem remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Did you catch that? Why have you conceived What's conceived? It's when something is born and birthed. That hate, that rage, that anxiety, that depression is something that is birthed inside of you because of something that you went through in your life. You don't just wake up one day, you take these little babies that are so precious and they run around here and they're so innocent. And they trust everyone. And someone abuses them. Someone hurts them. It becomes conceived and birthed in you. What's wrong with some of you this morning while you can't worship God is because there's been something conceived in you that is contrary to what God is. Just like, can you believe this is going along with, this is where we were. I'm not adding, uh, uh, we're not moving ahead. This is Acts chapter 5. Why have you conceived these things in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. When you come here, if there's no place in the world that you feel like you can be real, this ought to be the place that you could be real. And you don't have to come in here with the big smile on your face being a fake and acting like your life is perfect and acting like everything is okay and acting like there's nothing wrong and whatever that it is in your life, what you have to understand is when you come in the presence of God, you can't lie. You can't cover it up. You can fool me. I, I was telling people at work last week, I said, as a pastor, I probably get lied to more than any other profession. People, I will be there Wednesday night, preacher. We'll be there Sunday. You can count on us. Or, how, I, how you doing? I'm worried about you. Man, we're doing great. Well, you, our marriage is great. Our relationship is great. Our kids are great. You're sitting there lying to me, man. Why would God lay you on my heart if there wasn't something wrong? And Ananias and Sapphira, it's talking about money here. It's just talking about a possession of land. When they came and stood before God, God didn't require anything. He didn't say you had to give me this or give me that. It was a simple question, are you being real? Are you being honest with God? And as we bring our offering, our sacrifice of praise to God, as we gather in here today, are you being real about who you are? There's some of you that are no more saved than the man on the moon. You want people, I don't care how many times you've been baptized. I don't care how many times you've shook a little bit under the power of God. You're no more saved than, 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 than Charles Manson was back in the 70s. And you're living a lie. And you're acting like you're one thing when you're not. And there's going to come a time... And it's when we have services like this where we are in the presence of God, when God is swooping down with the Holy Ghost in the place to convict the sin and the heart of those that need him. And he's coming upon you. And you know what? There's people that just deceive and there's people that just don't want to be real. And, and you sit there and you're lying not to men, but to God. 
verse number five, then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last breath. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. Now it was three hours later, his wife came in not knowing what had happened. You see, your lie not only affects you, it affects your spouse and the people in your household. You teach your kids how to be fake. You, you teach your kids how to be hypocrites sometimes. Can somebody help me? They learn to be manipulators from the best manipulators. Ananias, here Sapphira comes in there. And Peter answered her and said, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. He doesn't ask for any money. He said, did you sell the land for this amount of money? People perceive this wrong. And she said, uh, yeah, for so much. And Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door. And they're going to carry you out. In verse number 10, then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last breath. And the young men came in and found her dead and carried her out and buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. What I feel this morning in my spirit is that this is just one of those defining moments of when the Holy Spirit Spirit is in the house today and I'm going to ask you a question Man, you can lie to me all you want to but it's through the Holy Spirit I'm asking you today is it well with your soul are you being real are you being all you say preacher you don't know listen we don't care where you've been, only where you're going. The Holy Spirit doesn't want to kill you and let you fall over dead today. It's not the goal of the Holy Spirit, but it could happen. You say, preacher, what makes you think that happened? Because I just read to you from the New Testament, when the church was birthed, they're doing miracles one day being shaken and filled with the Holy Ghost and the next day people that were followers are falling over dead in the temple in the house of God because they're living a double life the Bible teaches us that no man can serve two masters you'll either love the one or you'll hate the other and there are some of you that to put it as simple as simple can be today you are straddling a fence between reality and and between this world, world. What you are in the week is not what you are when you come in here on Sunday morning. I don't care if you're visiting today. Thank God for a visit. We have people who never been here before. People come back. I'm glad you're back. But you're here today because the Spirit of the Lord has drawn you here today. And here's what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to the church. Is it well with your soul? Are you who you say you are? If I were to take your children and I said, tell me about daddy. How does daddy treat mommy when there's nobody around but you? How does mommy treat daddy? How does mommy and daddy treat you? Would you be fearful what your children would share? Your conversation this morning, I feel this in my spirit. There's some of you ought to hit this altar over the conversation that you had in your vehicle this morning because it was not of God. It was confusion and it was out of anger and it was not what God intended it to be. And you ought to repent, not to God, but the people that had to hear you in your car this morning. That's for somebody. Be who you are, but let's be real. If you fall, admit it. Own it. Man, that's why I try to teach my players and coaching. 
You know, listen, I, I, some people don't like it. You do something wrong, you look at me, coach. My bad. I like it when my players do it. My bad, coach. I won't let it happen again. My bad. You ever see a player do that? You know what? That's what we got to be. Great. Hey, my bad. My bad. I messed up. I didn't do what was right. I haven't prayed. I haven't treated my family right. I, I've lied, conniving. I made a mistake. Hey, my bad. That means, hey, I'm going to own it. And the problem is, is nobody wants to own anything. It's always everybody else's fault. It's your ex's fault while you're the way that you are. It's your stepmommy's fault for the way you was. You came from a broken family. Listen, there has to come a point in your life when you quit making excuses for the past and realize that God has brought you where you are right now. Right now. And he loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way. You come as you are to this altar. You come and you kneel at this altar as you are, and you own it. God, I'm, I'm not what I've seen to be. I'm not living the way that I should be, God. I'm not right. And you ask him to forgive you. And you do your first works again. You repent. And God can take this. Some of you are struggling in relationships. You're struggling in your home. And the reason is, is because you are Ananias and Safari when the question is being asked to you. So I'm asking everybody in the room if they will please stand. And I want you to bow your heads. I want Sid to sing that again if she will. And I want you, if you will, will you just join hands with that person next to you this morning as I pray. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would make your heart soft enough this morning that when I say amen, that as soon as I say amen or before, you don't have to wait. You can come right now. You'll be man or a woman enough to admit where you are and pray for the mercy of God to help you. Saints, let's pray right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every one that is here under the sound of my voice. I thank you for the anointing that's on this stage this morning. I thank you for the truth that will stand when all hell is a mist. But God, there's somebody here right now that today is the day that their destiny has changed. No more excuses, no more lies, no more hypocrisy. But Lord, it's a day to say, Lord, here I am. Lord, take me just as I am. Lord, I don't have much to give, but Lord, such as I have, I give unto thee. Today is the day of salvation and today is the day of restoration. Lord, there's people right now, they're not saved. They go to hell. Lord let, them make a, Lord, let them make things right with you today. Lord, as we stand before you, they can lie to me, Lord, but they can't lie to you. Lord, you see our hearts. Lord, you see the heart. Lord, there's people right now. The heart's pounding out of their chest. Right now, they feel your power. Give them strength. Give them strength, God, to make the biggest step of their life and to come to this altar and pray. And Lord, as we begin to ask those people around us to our left and the right, if they would like to pray, Lord, if, Lord, 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 let us be used of the Spirit today as we begin to sing and let these altars be filled by people that are going to answer the question real before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you ready? Why don't you ask that person next to you if they'd like to pray? Amen. Let's come.